It's a fabulous day for an orchid pot potpourri, and I'm glad that you're here joining me. Thank you very, very much. I hope I can get a word in edgewise because on a beautiful day like this, everybody wants to be outside, including the gardeners. I'm not going to rush the process. I'm going to do my best with my editing if I find there's too much noise pollution in the background. We have work to do. Dendrobium antenatum from Floralia arrived on the 21st of May, and this is being recorded on the 11th of June. It is time to get this orchid into the pot that it can sustain itself and I don't have to keep worrying about it destroying my other blooms that it's next to because the leaves are quite sturdy and that it can get settled in in time for when this new growth here produces its own roots. I have already done all the cleanup process. It wasn't as bad as it looked when I started. I thought, oh dear, this is gonna take a while, but no, it wasn't so bad. There were some dead canes in the back that I just clipped off with secateurs, got rid of that. So it's all good. That's all taken care of. And now my thought process here is, I have my self-watering pot all ready to go. I have two loops as well in the pot. And I have a lot, a lot of damaged, broken lecker from the bags that I bought earlier this season. And I separated that out. Dendrobium antenatum is extremely vigorous. So in order to crock the pot and mix it up with lava rock, which I have back here, I'm going to use this broken up lecker so I don't waste it. Dendrobium antenatum can take this. They are gonna be all right with not having perfect rounded off lecker. So I'm gonna situate the camera in such a way that you can see what I'm doing regarding the potting up. And let's get this antenatum into a pot and settled. Here we go now. The antenatum over the past weeks has just been dunked and dried, dunked and dried with CalMag seaweed, the occasional MSU fertilizer, as if she were in a pot, but without actually having her potted up. I wanted to see how she would settle in, and she's been doing that nicely. Basically, I could have potted her up on the second, third day, but I prefer to wait just to see what I'm up against with the orchid. She blew over twice, which was a bit of a headache, but anyway, here we are. So let me just see, after filling the pot, I could put her in the middle, which is probably what I'm going to do because I cut off the back here, cleaning that up. You can see that if I've left roots, I've peeled off the velamen. I do want something for anchoring, despite the fact I'm going to add a support. So because I've cut her in the back here, I don't know if she's going to produce another eye or anything and grow out the back, but I'm going to just hedge my bets and put her into the middle because all the way around, she's got plenty of room. And you can see that my microfiber is floating nicely and I can actually get Lekka down in between those loops. And first, let me see how deep my support will be. And I'm going to raise my support up a little bit Otherwise, it's going to be too low in the pot. I don't want this orchid to become too unruly. So, my lecker goes in. Being broken up lecker, I treated it exactly the same way as if I would be using perfectly rounded lecker. It's been boiled, it's been leached, and because it is broken, it leached much, much faster off the excess minerals to come down to a reasonable TDS for me about 60 parts per million than any LECA that is clean and, you know, nicely rounded off without any breakage in them. So this was a quick leaching process, which was amazing for me, but I'm glad to be starting to use some of it because I don't like throwing things away and it just sort of is just there in bags or wherever. So I'm glad to be using some of it. However, I don't want to put my entire orchid in there. That was not part of the plan, although I'm really tempted. I'm really tempted in a way, but eh, just Lekka and Dendrobiums in my very, I would say, intermediate climate for this hot grower. I think I'm going to go with Lava Rock on the rest, even though I'm going to extend my support a little bit, take the kink out, even though Lava Rock is very unforgiving on the roots when it comes to a repot. I'm just going to work with the fact that this orchid is vigorous. 
It is a rooting machine, if you can get it right. And I'm gonna work with that in my mind and just make sure that I get its culture right. So that does become a rooting machine for me too, here in Spain. I believe my winters are a bit too cold for it. So I'm wondering if I've brought myself a headache into my home. I've always wanted one of these. And wanting, it doesn't necessarily equate into successful growing. So I don't know, we will have to wait and see. I'm going to do the best I can for it while it's here. And with that, I'm using large lava rock around it to fill it up because the lava rock won't get as cold as Lekka does. That is my thought process anyway. So yeah, let's get some lava rock in there because I'm liking where it is right now. And this is gonna be a one by one filling up of lava rock just because it's much more gentler and I can make sure that the pieces go in the right place. There she is. He is. Where's my tag? Oh, here. Ha! Ah. Right. One tag goes in here. Just to... Not that I would forget what this one is, but it looks nicer. It's more complete. I have tied her up. She looks a little bit quetched, like some delicious bunch of asparagus from the farmer's market but it serves the purpose right now. I need her stable in the pot. I have supported her a little bit around the base with lava rock so that she doesn't wobble when I take her from the shelf and flush her. But I'm liking the look of this a lot and I'm sure she's going to be fine. And because I didn't use any hydrogen peroxide, I am able to put fertilized water straight into the pot, into the reservoir, and she is ready to go. So that makes her first little transplant. And let me show you something else. Aha. Let me see if I can find it. I think we're going to get a spike. If I'm not blocking the view right there. Because she came with, you know, munched and aborted spikes, which is understandable from transport. There's another one there. But I think we're gonna try another attempt. That would be amazing, imagine getting antenatum bloom so soon. All right, fingers crossed that this worked. And I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with the little cutting that she produced when I cleaned her up. Why not try and save this little piece, huh? We might as well give it a go. It's got a new growth, some viable roots. And this one was on the mother plant until today. I crocked a little seedling pot here with some of this broken lecker. Might as well make use of it. Otherwise it would be garbage. And I'm going to use Akadama together with grit as a combination. 50-50. 50, 50. 50 Akadama, 50 terrarium grit. As this is a tiny one now, it is a seedling detached from the mother plant it is going to get a little bit more of seedling care. And we'll see if it grows on and if I can give it away. As the roots are doing their funny thing, I am going to put my tag in first so I'm not stabbing away blindly at any roots. And I've always put my tag in where the holes are to the back because when I manipulate and work with the orchid and flush her, then I don't have to guess where my holes are and I don't make a mess all around the shelving. So that's just me trying to make sure that I don't make myself more work than these already are. And probably all that was blocked by my hand. And give that a bit of a squeeze. Now I'm not going to be putting any support in here I'm gonna take two pieces of lava rock, and or four, whatever, and support the orchid just around the base. Because if this is what I think it's going to do, it'll be absolutely fine like this. It'll also be indoors, protected from the elements. 
and it'll root in relatively quickly, by which time the support is just a nuisance when it comes time to pot her up into a proper pot or send her off to somebody else. Just to be on the safe side, the Akadama is super dry. We're gonna fill the reservoir and make sure that it is all wet throughout. And then we're gonna watch and observe as to how she does, how well she does, and I hope she does well so that I can pass her on to somebody else who's interested. That would be the first. Now we're going to go on to the little ones. Let's make some space. We're going down from large to tiny. Next up, I am super excited because it's also an orchid that arrived on the same day as the antenatum we just worked on. My Repiculus Lelia Manticare. Look at this. This is amazing. Look at that. Woohoo, we've got roots in a short period of time from something that just didn't look like it was really going to go that fast. Here we are. Now, maybe I'm too soon with potting this up, but I'm gonna hope that what I'm about to do will work, and then I'm just gonna leave her alone and get on with it. Same thing with this order was always dunk and dry. Calcium, magnesium, seaweed, dunk and dry. Again, crocking with large lava rock down here. And I say again, not because we've just done that. I'm not using my rubbish leka for my rapiculus lelias. Just going to crock with large lava rock. Give me some leeway with my akadama. I'm going to put my tag in straight away because those little nubbins, I don't want them jiggled. That is if I can remove my tag from the wet surface right by the holes once again. So in it goes, eliminates that problem. And now we're going to fill up again with Akadama and grit. And I have to be a little bit careful with regards to the height. I don't want her too high in the pot to begin with. Potting up an orchid is always fun. Getting the timing right is the best part. You won't know until you do it whether you've got the timing right. Growing roots is also a great, great time to repot. However, now starts the challenge to keep the orchid from dehydrating through the leaves and declining further while she's exuding energy on pushing roots. Challenges on challenges on challenges with these little guys. But I love it. Now, all this Akadama here, I need to make wet. I need to have a baseline of the color that comes out, even though this has been washed and the powder and all the residue has been flushed out. I want to see the color of the water as it comes out, and that is good enough for me. This little residue, I'm not bothered with that. And now I'm going to fill up around her with small lava rock all the way. like that, not touching the nubbins, but the nubbins have access to the pot. And I'm going to prop her up with pieces of large lava rock around her because that new growth is growing already above the base. And what I'm doing now is only temporary to make sure that she is stable while the roots grow and hopefully anchors her into the pot really, really quickly, and then we can remove the lava rock supports around the base. Just make sure that it's done carefully because now when she goes on the shelf, I am not moving her and I need to keep her in situ and flush her exactly where she is so there's no more jiggling from here on in. Let's say, once she's on the shelf. And I'll show you after the video. Oh, very, very carefully we maneuver her out of the way and give her another flush. No fertilizer now. 
everything that I've done in the past weeks with this one was to pump her up and get fertilizer in her. Now that the roots are only just starting, she has no viable roots, there is no point in compromising the surface of the media with any kind of fertilizer. It is now up to the orchid to grow roots. And when I feel with my tug test that she is somewhat rooted in, that is when I will start applying fertilizer again. Mantikeri in the pot, off to the shelf she goes, fingers crossed. I'm going to clean up now and we still have another surprise. I'll be right back. This makes me so happy. Look at that date. This is the one from Luke Orchidin, the gift orchid, 24th. And today's the 11th of June. Look at Mrs. Little Trooper here. Check this out. Can you see that little nub in there? <laughs> Isn't that amazing? We are a go with Regentii and these are shy root growers. Okay, let me qualify that. They, they will grow roots, but to keep the roots alive and happy, that is the challenge. So I have two other Regentiis and I'm seeing similar symptoms that they want to grow roots and then for some reason the roots will die off. I don't know whether that is because of humidity or too much or too little, too wet around the roots. So I'm, I'm taking, you know, two out of three in different stages and this will be my third one. Isn't this amazing? This makes me so happy. Anyway, she's ready to go. So let's stop yapping. Let's get this show on the road and put her in a pot. I removed a back suitable because once they look like this, even though they are firm, if the base is sort of brown and dried out, nothing will come out of the suitable, but I kept it because I wanted to show you that that one has been removed. And now, in this little cute pot, I have medium-sized lava rock as crocking, just for proportion's sake. And the procedure will be the similar one as to the other one. My tag is gonna go in first. And then I'm going to fill up with my akadama. Let's check the height. She is also going into the middle. I'm not potting this one in any kind of form up against the pot, straight into the middle, prime position. Let her expand wherever she wants to go. Meanwhile, the two new growths are coming out this way, but that doesn't mean that that's all she's going to be doing. So I'm just going to be very careful with my akadama right now. And then I've got mini, mini lava bits that I'm going to top. And if I then need to support her with large lava rock, I can also do that. That is why she's a bit lower in the pot as well, just so that I can add layers if need be. It's going to raise her up a little bit, not because of the growths, but because of the final height that I want her at. Fiddle, fiddle, fiddle. Oh, I love these guys. Now, what am I doing different with this one as opposed to the other two I already have? One is in Akadama and Terrarium Grit only, and it is crocked at the bottom with lava rock like I'm doing here. The only difference being that I have not put any lava rock on the surface. There's only terrarium grit and akadama. So that is a very wet environment for the roots when they arrive, just grow out and want to go in the pot. The other one has little bits of lava rock all around the top, but is with ceramis to my recollection. That one is growing in new growth, and I haven't done the tug test, but I don't think it's rooted in either. So that is another test, but it's looking a little bit healthier than the first one. And this one I'm going to do with the Akadama and the grit being at 50-50 ratio. So it, the Akadama for me is just for wick, wicking, but the grit is there to dry it out. And this one's going to get a top dressing of small, small lava rock, which I have been <laughs> sorting out from large lava rock. Yes, I've, you know, the things you do, right? So I've been quite pedantic with lava rock sizes as well, much as I have been with Lekka sizes, <laughs> precisely for the purposes of doing this with my little Lelias when they arrive and to be, just to be ready, you know, be prepared. 
Oh, this is making me so happy. When I saw the root nubbins this morning, I'm like, we are on a go. We're going. We're, yep, you're getting a pot. Okie dokie. And that is all there is to it. I believe that she's stable enough. Believing is no security, however. So to be on the safe side, I will back up the structures a little bit with lava rock all around. I want to be able to monitor this growth right here, which is looking a tad deep for me and to my liking. Let's get you a little bit, there we go. A little bit more of a dry environment with the media that is around that growth. And just support everything with a bit of lava rock. Temporarily. If I see that the roots are coming in and crawling over the lava rock, I shall remove them because I don't want the roots to attach to this. I know it sounds counterproductive, but this is just to support the orchid for the time being. Because she's now also going on a shelf and will not be moved because all she gets now is regular flushes. Also with plain RO water, her treatment up until now has been exactly the same as the Mantecari. And for that reason, we're just going to flush through and wet the Akadama with plain RO water. So this is all that's going to happen to her now until I am quite confident by watching the leaves, if they're going to deteriorate, dehydrate or whatever, desiccate, then I'm going to take her out of the pot and I'm gonna start the dunk and dry routine all over again. I'm hoping that won't be necessary. I'm gonna put her in her place and I'll show you why I'm going to make sure I don't move these orchids. If this is the second floor, we've got the first floor, we are now on the ground floor at the back of my little blooming alley walkway. I have cleared this shelf here for my upcoming Rapiculus Lelias as they are ready to be potted up because here I have to be very conscious of the fact that it can get very windy in my climate. I have a back wall protecting from wind coming from the west. There are buckets in the way that will protect them coming in from the south and I've got trellising to the left there. So here it's quite, quite a secluded spot, which is good. They get plenty of light. I've orientated them away from the sun so the new growths hopefully will grow upright. So all these considerations I now have in my head because don't move them. So the idea being I can just come in with my jug and flush in situ and everything will just drain away onto the terracotta Hakuna Matata. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy. Regentii this morning when I saw those nubbins, I'm like, all right, here we go. Yes, I'm so happy. But you see here, that's the idea. No movement, no jostling around, no removing from the shelf. That's what I did with my Cernua there on the right and my little Entsfelsia back there as well. Because even though we had blooms, she's not rooted in. And I don't want the moving back and forth from the normal Rapiculus Lelia table. So back there she is, and I can just apply my jug and give them a good flushing as well as misting. These will not get misted. The growths now are kind of in danger if I kept misting them. So I'm gonna be very careful about what I'm doing above them and just checking them. But I can keep an eye on them here and I think I can keep them safe. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Fingers crossed I can keep them safe. Thank you everybody so very much for watching. I appreciate your time, really, really do. Have yourselves a wonderful day and please stay safe. Take care, bye.